Hello everybody and welcome back. As always, I am Mateo311 and this is your one channel for everything VR related. Today, we have some pretty amazing stories to go over, including a list of new VR game announcements, upcoming VR tournaments with cash prizes, and I'm finally going to break down those Oculus Quest leaks and let you guys know what specs I think the new Oculus headset will have. So let's not waste any time, let's jump right into this. So first up in the game news, we got a trailer announcement for Mask Maker. From the same studio that brought us A Fisherman's Tale, Mask Maker is a captivating VR adventure full of mystery and a sense of wonder. You'll take on the role of the Mask Maker's apprentice, enter the Mask Realm, jump from mask to mask or puzzle to puzzle, all while unraveling the mysteries of this secret realm. Mask Maker will be available in Spring 2021. So next up, the PlayStation 4 creative application Dreams has just added VR support. Dreams is unique as it relies on player created content and everything that has already been created by flat screen gamers will be available to the PlayStation VR community. Now, as you can imagine, this will become the wild west of VR content. So luckily some safety nets have been put in place. Authors have the option to disable VR as an option in their content and conversely make titles VR exclusive. There are comfort options, including a virtual cinema feature. If an overly elaborate design leads to excessively poor performance in VR mode, the game will pop you into a virtual theater style mode, where you take a few steps back and you're basically looking at a floating screen. But if you really want to, you can disable this feature and explore those worlds with an excessively low and potentially nauseous inducing frame rate. But most importantly, this game has the potential to open up the floodgates for new VR content. So next up, we got a release date for Cookout, A Sandwich Tale. Now this is from the same studio that brought us Akron, Attack of the Squirrels, and Angry Birds VR. Cookout is a four-person party style game where you'll have to work together to properly push out food. It appears to be similar to the flat screen title Overcooked. Cookout will be available for both the Oculus Quest and Oculus Rift on September 3rd, with the potential of a full PC VR release at a later date. So next up, the studio that brought us Beta Immortal will be releasing additional information on their next title, Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy's Edge, tomorrow, July 28th. So if you're dying for new information on this project, it's right around the corner. And if you don't feel like looking it up yourself, I will be discussing it on next week's news video. As of right now, little is known about this project besides the fact that it is an action adventure title and it takes place between Star Wars The Last Jedi and Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. It's also centered around the Black Spire outpost of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. I'm eagerly waiting for additional information as I truly enjoyed the Vader Immortal series, but I think there's a lot of room for improvement on the next title. Okay, so next up, I have a free beta game that you guys can check out right now. The company Joyway has been banging out VR titles. They're currently working on a title called Stride, which is very similar to Mirror's Edge in VR. One of their other titles, previously known as Change Ranger, has been renamed Time Hacker, and you can get a beta key to test it out right now. The game appears to be similar to Time Stall, but with more of a superhero theme and additional cartoon violence. You get to stop time, alter reality, and ultimately solve a puzzle with some cartoon mayhem. If you are interested in testing out this game, the link is in the description below. Okay, so last up, we have two VR tournaments with cash prizes. If you've been following this channel for a while, you've most likely seen me play both of these games on multiple occasions. The first title is Swords of Gura. The last time I checked, the prize pool was over $500, and there's absolutely no entry fee for the tournament. Players will be competing in an extensive round-robin tournament designed to identify the strongest and weakest players. Those rising to the top will again compete in an additional round-robin tournament to identify the true winner. I am taking part in this tournament, but I definitely do not expect to be one of those people who will rise to the top. If you're interested in joining, there is a link in the description, which includes the full rules and how to enter. So next up, the preseason for the Tower Tag League starts on August 1st and continues until September 13th. The current cash prizes for this league are up to $1,800. 
Tower Tag already has a history of being a competitive VR title, and cash prizes are not something new. The game has just moved from being in on-site tournaments to online tournaments. I do absolutely love this title. It's a truly competitive and strategic shooter, but this is one tournament I am not getting into. Okay, so moving into the software news, Oculus has quietly released experimental hand tracking support for WebXR in their Oculus browser. WebXR, if you're not aware, includes applications designed to be played in a web browser with support for VR. So now you'll basically be able to experiment with web-based VR applications while using hand tracking. Oculus is Time Warp, their solution for reprojection when an application does not maintain the native frame rate, is also now available for WebXR in an experimental state. Okay guys, let's jump into the hardware news and finally start discussing the leaks of the new Oculus headset. I've stayed silent on this topic for quite some time because honestly I didn't feel there was much to discuss. But I finally think I have enough information to let you guys know what to expect from this next headset. So first off, what exactly do we truly know? Well, nothing. We can't say anything with complete certainty. But the recent leaks are most likely accurate. The images released from Walking Cat are most likely valid. They do after all have a proven track record and there are multiple other sources saying Saying that headsets are in production and things seem to be lining up. Now, does that guarantee everything we see in these pictures is 100% accurate? No. Small aspects of the product can still change, and this might not be the 100% final version. So what I wanted to do for this video, rather than critique the crap out of the images like everyone else had, is focus on what we actually know about Facebook, their motivation and ultimate goals, and how that translates into their next product. As VR gamers, we know where Oculus needs to improve on the Oculus Quest, and trust me, they know that information too. But above all else, they want to make the best business decisions. So we know Facebook has the goal of making VR a mainstream platform. This is clearly evident in their excessive support for the Oculus Quest, while the Rift S gets neglected. Requiring a gaming PC is hardly mainstream. We also know that the Oculus Go sold like hotcakes last holiday season, and that Facebook is willing to sell hardware at or near cost, with the expectation to make the bulk of their profit on software. So this makes the new upcoming HMD much more likely to be an Oculus Lite, rather than a full-fledged Oculus Quest 2.0. Facebook will have three goals with this new headset. To maintain at least the quality that you currently experience on the Oculus Quest, implement any improvements they can without driving up the cost of the product, and finally, reduce the overall production cost with modifications to things like the materials used. I'll break down all three of these. So Facebook actually does exceptionally well in producing a product that is good enough. There are clearly rooms for improvement on the Rift S and Oculus Quest, but it clearly achieves its goal at a very affordable price. So I'm not expecting any major performance enhancements on this version. There's no point in a higher resolution screen when the existing hardware can already barely run at that resolution. The same thing goes for the refresh rate of the display, but this is more likely than increasing the overall resolution. Upgrading to more powerful hardware, like the Qualcomm XR2 platform, will definitely raise the price tag too much. And if there is a hardware improvement, I expect it to be something like storage or amount of RAM. In terms of improvements, they will most likely be quality of life improvements. This means a lighter and more comfortable headset. If Oculus can afford to implement some other cheap bells and whistles, they will. People who have scrutinized the leaked images may have already uncovered one of these bells and whistles, which is a thumb trackpad for the controllers. These allow you to move your thumb position in-game without touching the thumbstick. There's also been a lot of scrutiny to the lens on this new Oculus headset, and users are wondering if we will be getting an increased FOV. Now in terms of lowering the overall cost, it looks like Facebook is going to an all plastic design. It's also a possibility. In order to reduce production costs, Oculus has moved from two LCD screens to a single panel. The lack of an IPD adjustment knob has a lot of users worried, but again, this is not guaranteed, and there does appear to be something going on in the very center of the headset, so all hope is not lost. Now the leaks also say we should be getting additional information on September 15th, which might end up being the official product announcement. My official expectations is a new Oculus Quest that might be slightly better and slightly cheaper. 
possibly $300 to $350. This makes it competitive against the upcoming consoles this holiday season, and that new white design gives it brand recognition. In a world of 20 different similar looking black headsets, and clueless parents who accidentally got their kids the Oculus Go last season, a bold looking white new headset will help make sure that people get the product they were looking for. Okay guys, that was my new VR news. I actually went on a lot longer than I expected to, so I hope you stuck around. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, consider subscribing, and I will see you guys on next time.